735 on a beautiful May 1st. Jerry, would you like to introduce our next guest? I would. It would be my privilege to introduce to y'all Mr. Lloyd Camp Yay. with Camp's Plants. How are you today, Good sir? morning. Just doing wonderful. The sun's out, shining bright, and, and people are out working their gardens. And finally, we have weather that we can work in, where mm. it's not just a total swamp out there. Is that helping your business, people uh, getting out there? And you betcha. You betcha. This uh, uh, weather is, is so uh, conditional in our business, you know, and I'm just going to have to apologize right off the bat here this morning and tell people that if we're a little slow getting to them, it's because there's 20 to 30 cars in our parking lot, just a big lot of the day here for the last uh, – few days since the sun's come out and the weather's nice and people can get out there and, and put those flower beds in and and uh, get ready for mother's day coming up here in about 10 days so i mean we've got a lot of folks that's out searching and looking for the right stuff speaking of mother's day it's right the perfect the spot for all your mother's day gift needs are right there at lord camps camps plants absolutely i'll tell you uh you know, n nothing better than something that's live that people can enjoy all and summer long. You know, when yeah. I bought those two potted plants last year, you said, "Now you take good care of them; they'll last you probably till November." Had I not forgot to bring them in on November thirtieth, they would have lasted till December. <laughs> I'm not joking; I still oh, had color in the basket, and up until around Thanksgiving. I'll, I'll tell you, I, I've got a place up in Central Missouri, and uh, they had some big patio pots which we do a, a, a huge number of patio pots that had geraniums in them and they forgot that they had set three of them in the back end of a pickup truck <laughs> setting out in front of the store that was closed so they got no water other than what the rain watered when i got up there in october they were still gorgeous i mean just beautiful <laughs> made the pickup truck look better <laughs> it did it did that old 91 model ford looked a whole lot better <laughs> And with that said, I mean, we have to stress that you have that super dirt, and it, that is some good stuff, man. I Absolutely. Mean, Anytime that you can compost yard waste and put turkey litter and, mm. and rice hulls and so forth in it, uh, uh, composted bark to loosen the soil, I mean, it just makes all the difference in the world for, for folks on their gardens. And, uh, you know, I tell folks we've pretty well got the nutrients that you need in it with the exception of some nitrogen. Anytime you're composting product, it's going to pull some of the nitrogen out. So if you put a little nitrogen in there with it, you've got uh, uh, you've got a very well balanced formula for for gardens or for flower pots or or uh, flower beds. I even had one one fellow that uh, bought three semi loads of it and put it on for a yard. Uh, all he had was a was a uh, uh, old clay hillside, and mm. and we dumped semi loads in there, and and they took a bobcat, sprayed it around, got one of the most Pretty yards down around Tracy Ferry there that you ever seen. Really? That's awesome. Wow. That is some good. And I know you say add that nitrogen, but I'm like, Dale, I didn't do anything. I just went out and got your hanging baskets. And that dirt will sustain whatever plant you put in that. Thing. Well, now our hanging baskets are a little different because we mix all of our own soil there at, at Midway. Okay. And we actually put Osmocote, which is a time to release fertilized. And I use an eight to nine month formulation. Uh, oh, okay. now it's going to, it's going to dissipate quicker than that at 90 degree temperatures. That's at mm. 70 degrees. It'll dissipate in eight to nine months, but at 90 degree temperatures, you're probably looking at three to four months on it. Uh, so yeah, uh, most definitely, uh, when you get into the baskets, we try to go the extra mile and, and put the extra nutrients in there that folks are going to be able to enjoy that plant throughout the summer without a lot of extra, extra care. I mean, you can get a, uh, you can get a small, uh, basket from a box store and and spend a lot of time trying to fertilize and keep the water on it two or three times a day but uh uh when you get something that has things in there that that uh, that plant needs continuously uh, it's just going to produce so much better all the way all the way through the season and it's genetics of the plants too i'm sure i mean you the stuff you sell is grown here and you get those box car chain store th those things could be grown in north carolina Totally different. Climate. Or North Korea. To yeah. Who knows? Totally different everything, but they're not accustomed to Arkansas climate. Yours are. Not not only that, but of course, box stores, you know, they want to sell it real cheap. And I don't, I don't blame them for that. Don't blame people for wanting to save money. No. But, you know, you generally get what you pay for because a lot of those products, uh, they may have three, four weeks, maybe even up to six weeks less 
growing time in them than what we do because we try to develop a root system that's going to hang out there and and, uh, and and really take hold in the ground and, and, and work for folks. And it does. And it does. It shows. It does. Now, you got gardening. Uh, I guess you're going to have all the gardeners out there. You got everything they need to get the garden started. We've got all of the bedding plants, hanging baskets, perennials, anything that has to do with the plants, come on out and see us. We try to stay away from uh, doing a lot with uh, uh, bagged products uh, simply because we're in the greenhouse business, okay? We, we know what we can specialize in, and we know what, what we're good at. So uh, we just try to, uh, try to kind of stick with the, uh, the live plants, and uh, we don't do a lot of uh, – uh, a lot of the bag products and so forth, but if they come see us, you know, we'll, we'll send them the right place to get what they need. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's say that I've got a, an area in the yard that I want to convert to a flower bed and get the tiller out and work the dirt, get ready to go. And I come up to see your folks at Cam's plants. And I've always said, I don't have a green thumb. I've got a greasy thumb because I've been in the garage too long. So I want to get this thing up and running. You can, you can get me going from start to finish. Absolutely. Matter of fact, uh, pretty well every every store we've got, we've got some people with some expertise there that they can tell you if this plant needs to go in the sun, if it goes in the shade. Uh, I have some folks that comes out and they kind of raise their eyebrows when they see some of our patio pots that has quote unquote sun and shade plants in them. Well, those are pots that we have developed that can be utilized anywhere that there's at least a half a day of sun or half a day of shade. Mm. Uh, they'll, they'll work very, very well in that type of a situation. And a lot of people don't realize that. Just because it says shade on there doesn't mean it can't take some sun. Uh, it's just that it's not going to be able to take that real hot afternoon sun. It's it's going to gonna burn out if you put it in that type of a location or don't give it enough water. But otherwise, uh, uh, otherwise, it'll work very well with half a day of shade and half a day of sun. What about, uh, like, just flower bed plants, uh, petunias, uh, marigold? What else is there out there? Mm. Petunias, I can't oh, even Petunias, remember. impatience, marigolds, impatience, begonias, marigolds, begonias. Uh, all different types of celosia, rose moss. That is a, that is a huge, huge item with folks because it just loves that hot sun and loves the, loves the dry conditions. You does know, it? it just does better right out in the hot sun, even when it's a little dry. Hmm. Uh, but there's geraniums, you know, those those will last year round. Back uh several years ago there was a barbecue place over at uh uh over at Lakeview. They would come in every year and they would buy geraniums and put in an old wheelbarrow with with uh uh, uh what well wandering Jew and uh mouse ear Jew. And you wouldn't think of that as being an outdoor plant. That's more of an indoor plant. They had some of the prettiest pots out in front of their in front of their store there. With that in, right out in the direct sun. Mm. And uh, we'd go there about once or twice a week and eat. And I'd go out and deadhead their geraniums for them every week when I got got over there. <laughs> <laughs> Little PR work there. Little right? PR work. Uh, <laughs> they, were, they were gorgeous. So you got locations um, to serve. You got Highland Harrison and the here. Two local. here in Mountain Home. One Mountain Home, one, one in Midway. A couple up in Central Missouri. Uh, I'll tell you, uh, Versailles and Eldon. Yeah. Right up, right off the Lake of the Ozarks there. Yeah. Uh, got, uh, uh, Harrison store has been really amazing to me. We have some giant ferns and people love them for mother's day. And, uh, I took her 50 of them over last Thursday. I was back over there on Saturday. She was totally out. I took another 25 on Saturday Talked to her yesterday evening. She was down to two. We're taking 30 to 40 back over there again today. Uh, Lisa told me that yesterday down here at Mountain Home, there was a lady called, and she said, do you all do deliveries? And Lisa said, well, not generally, but uh, what are you looking for? And she said, oh, said, I'm away from here. And she says, my mama's birthday is coming up, and said, Mother's Day is coming up. And she says, I want four of those giant ferns. But she said, I've got to have somebody that can deliver them. And Lisa said, well... I'll I'll take care of doing it. And Lisa said on the way there, she said, I thought, how do I get myself into this stuff? And she said, and she said, whenever I, whenever I walked up and handed those to the lady and seen the radiant smile on her face, the look on her face, she said, now I know why Uh, I get into this. There you go. I'm amazed at all the stuff that he's got out here just on 62 West. Uh Uh-huh. 
Yeah, that's a lot. Now you, I mean, I know people have been buying it, and they're probably going to be bum rushing you here soon. Like on those ferns, there's got to be some kind of limited quantity on that. There I is. And you just can't keep going and going. It's called when he runs out. That's yeah. when we run out. That's that's correct. I think Lisa said she's down to about 30 left down there is all she's got left between now and Mother's Day. And we can't, uh, you know, you just can't grow them. Those, those take, uh, oh, anywhere from six to nine months to get them to the size that they are. Right. Let's uh, just say you have 29 out there. So, uh. So, so, so one of them is gone, right? <laughs> I, got, I got to do something for Mother's Day here. What better gift than a fern? Man? Well, good. So uh, I guess if you want it, you better get out there to Camp's Plants, folks, because it's going pretty quick, isn't it? It's it's going in a hurry. It's uh, going. What's in your hurry. hours today and tomorrow? Uh, we're open from 8 to 6. Uh, Both days? Actually, yes, actually Monday, Monday through Saturday, and now on Sunday, then we're open uh, 1 to 5, mm-hmm. uh, you know. Really just soon not be open on Sunday at all, but those plants have got to have water too. So yeah. if we're there, uh, we're, we're going we're gonna, to we're, we're gonna sell. Yeah. Yeah. Visit Lloyd Camp of Camp's Plants. Don't forget, Mother's Day is the 10th. Now's the time to get your Mother's Day flowers and gifts from Camp's Plants. Time for, uh, mm, I'm up one. It's uh, <laughs> about to go back to the news. It's time for Hannity. We'll be right back. Seven fifty-two, fifty degrees in Mount Home. Clinton's already at fifty-five degrees. Wow, we're gonna have some great weather this weekend. I'm ready. For I'm it. ready. You got four more minutes. I'm gonna turn over <laughs> Lloyd. Uh, outside all this, you do have mulch, and I know I drive around a lot, and I see a lot of people need mulch on their landscape to brighten things up and to keep the bugs out. I'm going to let you run. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you, that is that is so very true, and, and so many people don't understand how important that mulching a garden or, or a flower bed is. Uh, l- look around at the, at the premier places here in Mountain Home, and uh, a big lot of those you're going to see is going to have mulch from Camp's Plants on it. Big Creek, uh, we delivered two or three loads out of there, out there six-yard loads just in the last couple of days. First Security Bank has just got all of theirs uh, redone they've used our mulch for now probably oh 10 12 years uh just do a fantastic job with it uh the college have used our mulch ever since they have been here Mm -hmm. uh and hey it does it helps keep the bugs away from from the plants that you've got it helps with uh keeping the moisture level like it ought to be through the hot summer uh and you know how hot it gets around in the summer here Mm -hmm. you know if you can keep that moisture level down at the root level uh boy i'll tell you it just makes such a difference in the way those plants are going to survive and the way they're going to produce throughout the throughout the year you know a lot of people don't think too awful much about uh how much mulch even helps with with a garden but you put some good mulch around uh uh set of tomato plants or wherever and and once you till that in the fall then you've got your humus in there for the next year as well so it continues to help loosen the soil uh year round so, you know, mulch is a very, very big factor when it comes to uh, being successful in a in a garden or a flower bed type situation. So it not only looks pretty, it actually does something. It actually does something. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. Well, no doubt Lloyd Camp's our gardening professional around here. There's just too much to talk about. We didn't even get to touch on the tomato oh, no. plants, one we'll of my favorite subjects, but. Uh, you got tomato plants. You Man, can't I'll go tell you what. List, if, if if you if you can't if you can't find the kind of tomato you want out there, we've got I think it's fifty some varieties of the heirloom tomatoes mm. and gallon pots. We've got uh, about thirty varieties of of uh, of other types of tomatoes, the old standards. We've got all your peppers and and uh, cabbage, broccoli, cauliflower, all that sort of stuff you need for your garden. So come Good. on by and see us. Absolutely. There you go. Hmm. Well, what do you think about that, Dale? Mm. How much time you got? Because I can run with it. Well, I'll give you two more minutes. How's two that? more minutes. All right. Now I won't charge you a penny. All right. <laughs> on, the, on the tomato plants, now one of my favorites was old Golden Girls. I like it because it's low acidic level and all that. But, I mean, you you were talking about some other plants that I have mm. not heard of before. What's this little cherry tomato you say that is sweeter than sugar? There, there's one they call sun sugar. We started handling it two years ago. Last year we run out, and I didn't even get one to plant for myself. I mean, that's how fast they sold. I bought three times the amount of them this year, and a big lot of them are gone. 
Uh, but there, there's all sorts of, of the old varieties of tomato plants. One that's been very popular this year is the old German tomato and Mr. Stripey. And I will tell you, them things are as ugly as ugly can get. <laughs> but you talk about a flavor, and people have come back in looking for those this year. And we've just, I mean, we just sell them right and left, hmm. you know. Mr. Stripey. Mr. Stripey. Uh, it's kind of almost a, almost a green and white with just a little pink stripe in it, you know, when it, when it gets ripe. But they really have a flavor to them. Is the inside red like an uh, No, it's, it's going to be more the color of the outside. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, it. Say, it's getting weird. <laughs> yeah. Hey, have you ever eaten a white tomato? No, I no, haven't. That, that's a, I'll tell you, they've got a good flavor to them, but they're, they're actually a no acid tomato. Oh, really? They, they have no acid at all to them. Okay. But they do have a good flavor, which is kind of surprising because you think of that acid given the flavor, but they, these have got a flavor all of their own. Wow. That's neat. Yeah. All right, and and I guess you got all the beef steaks and the Romas Absolutely. and all that ready. Big again. boy, better boy, Rudker, uh, Sweet One Hundreds, all all of the all of the common varieties we've we've got out there in in just regular four packs. Yes. All right, folks. And again, they're grown here, so they thrive here, and I can attest to that because I had tomato plants as tall as me that I gotten from out there. So. Yeah, but you're not all that tall. <laughs> <laughs> we'll wrap it up with that. <laughs> Folks, now's the time for all your plants' needs, whether it's for vegetables or flowers for mom. Go see Lloyd Camp at Camp's Plants. That wraps it up. The weekend is upon us. We will see you on Monday. Time for Rush Morning Update, followed by Glenn Beck. See you later.